So there's a number of ways that Watson can benefit patients in healthcare. And as we take Watson through um, the various stages of medical school at University of Maryland, and as we make it in intern and resident, it's going to get increasingly sophisticated. So starting out, we're gonna teach it what is a sign, what's a symptom, we're gonna teach it some anatomy just as we teach our medical students. And then as time goes on, we're gonna have it start learning how to read the um, electronic chart, just as we do for our medical students. What is a normal lab value? What is really important as far as what to look for in the chart? What are some of the common abbreviations? And then as time goes on, we're gonna teach it some differential diagnosis so it can act as a uh, diagnostician. We're gonna teach it to look through the electronic medical record and understand what are drug interactions and what are drugs and therapies that patients with certain diagnoses have so it can read and serve as a safety check. So the same way you would have a spell checker or a grammar checker on your word processor, Watson is going to act like a um, grammar checker or spell checker for the electronic medical record. And then finally, um, because Watson is going to be partnering and IBM's partnering with Nuance, we'll have the capability for Watson to understand um, the spoken word and be able to listen to physicians and patients as they interact and actually provide live guidance for physicians as their assistant as they interact with patients. So a really exciting number of things and we'll be taking Watson through medical school at University of Maryland just as we have so many other students. And we have, as you know, tremendous resources as far as experience in teaching, as far as experience with uh, clinical care, and as far as experience with research in informatics in many different aspects. And so we're going to start out creating test versions of the electronic medical record and testing Watson. We're gonna start feeding Watson um, New England Journal of Medicine CPC cases to see how well Watson is able to, in a structured environment, um, come up with diagnoses and treatment options. And we're gonna have Watson put through its paces as far as being able to um, work with our electronic medical records in a safe, secure, private way without compromising any patient identities and allow it to learn and get smarter in a manner similar to what we do with the medical students. And so, um, as time goes on, we will teach Watson many different um, aspects of um, diagnostic and uh, therapeutic care. I think it's going to um, take as long to teach Watson as it takes to um, teach a freshman medical student. And, and I think, you know, it's a very labor-intensive task, and it's something that hasn't really been done. Back in the late 1970s and 80s, there were attempts at artificial intelligence in medicine and attempts at teaching computer systems how to make diagnosis. And the technology just wasn't ready then. Now it's 2011, there's been a long hiatus and nobody has really attempted a renaissance or reinvigoration of trying to institute artificial intelligence and diagnosis. And so there are a lot of unknowns and things that we're doing that really nobody has been able to. But because of the unique aspects of Watson in that it has the capability of being able to ingest information automatically without having to program each and every question. It has the capability of being able to interact and be able to process very quickly. It has the ability to um, store vast amounts of information and combine them without having to be told every single answer to every single question in a manual way. And it has the capability of being able to interact real time rather than taking long periods of time to be programmed. I think for all those reasons, the technology is really promising. So I think in the next two or three years, we'll start being able to use it to understand the electronic medical record and to act like a spell or grammar checker on safety issues and to highlight and summarize what's in the record. I think in the next five to 10 years, it'll seriously be able to help out with diagnosis and treatment options. And I think beyond that, it will be a tool that will sit beside we physicians as we take care of patients and actually allow um, us to be more effective and it will interact with us using the spoken word and it may interact with patients using the spoken word in the next five to 10 years or so. Well, so then we're starting to talk about sort of the man-machine interface and how it looks and how it will work. I think initially it'll be something that just appears on a computer screen um, as very low key. I think as time goes on though, we'll try to figure out what is the best way from a social and psychological perspective 
to have it interact with the physician and the patient. And whether or not they think it would be beneficial to actually have something that seems to have a presence in the room with a voice and a person or whether it happens on the screen, I'm really looking forward to not only the intellectual aspect of this, but sort of the social and the psychological aspect. And what makes patients feel most at ease and what is the most efficient way to interact with it is something that we at University of Maryland are hoping to explore. I think it'll be fun and really interesting and the uh, education of this new entity um, is going to be fascinating. It's going to be different from uh, educating a human medical student and figuring out how to have this new sort of branch of the medical school that is able to train software and figure out um, what sort of um, patient um, interaction it has and uh, what sort of bedside manner to program into it is going to be a really fun and fascinating project. I've gotten all sorts of really interesting questions. People have asked me whether this is Skynet and whether or not um, we are creating machines that will somehow be smarter and take us over and I get asked whether or not it will essentially replace physicians. But in all the work that I've done in artificial intelligence and diagnostic imaging, it's always served as an assistant and as something that can make me more effective. And having a team of humans and having a team of um, machines and s intelligent software I think is going to be really what happens in the future. And so when people are concerned about it replacing physicians or somehow becoming smarter, based on everything that I know, I think it'll become a really good, maybe charming, maybe fun, really helpful assistant, but not replace humans. So if you look back at previous attempts to create intelligent diagnostic systems, I think what you see has been a lack of the ability for the computer to automatically learn on its own and automatically be able to read information such as textbooks and journal articles and a new patient's chart. It's been a very manual process where the information almost had to be coded into the program. What's new and different now is having a system that has the capability to acquire knowledge, be able to sort that out and look for patterns, and also to be able to interact very efficiently and very rapidly. And so now that we have speed and the ability to ingest information and the analytic ability, I see this as being the most promising step forward and the most promising team that um, one can work with. And I can't imagine any better combination than the IBM Jeopardy and Watson team and University of Maryland. I think we at University of Maryland are uniquely situated to be able to provide comprehensive education for Dr. Watson. We have the clinical background and expertise, really deep expertise. We have a lot of expertise in educating medical students and we'll just have to learn how to educate a new type of medical student. And we have tremendous resources at the University of Maryland College Park, UMBC, and collaborators that we've worked with who have really deep computer experience, really deep machine learning experience, and so we have tremendous resources. And so I think that IBM really was wise and will do very well to be working with the University of Maryland School of Medicine and all its affiliated campuses and people too. So I'm really excited about the project.